Stu, the fine tuning of the universe is uh, analyzed by different people in many different ways. Those who would believe in God say that it is certainly suggestive, if not proving, but suggestive that there is a designer. Those who see uh, that there is no God who would look to the laws of physics must come up with, in their view, multiple universes in order to select the specific laws of physics as we have it. As you've studied complexity theory, as you've thought about things in perhaps ways that other people haven't, uh, how do you view fine-tuning? Fine-tuning is a huge problem. Um, it's a piece of, of, of a much bigger problem, which is why is the universe complex? Um, one of the answers is, the, is this idea that we have a multiverse uh, or multiple universes, and we lucked out. We happen to be in the one that has the right constant, so we have physicists wondering about it. I got to say, I hate the idea. I just despise it. That doesn't mean at all that it's wrong, mm -hmm. okay, just because a biologist despises an idea. But it, it does seem to me uh, that that William of Ockham would really be badly perturbed <laughs> with with uh, 10 to the 500th mm -hmm. universes. That's that's an abundance of universes that, that seems a little superfluous. That means that uh, if we're not going to have multiple universes, that the constants of nature and conceivably the laws of nature have to evolve in one universe. Now, nobody's thought hard about this. In fact, I've, I've seen nobody but me thinking about it, and I don't trust myself at all. I'm not a physicist. Um, but there is this idea of the adjacent possible. Um, uh, a, a concrete example is a thousand molecules in a chemical pot. Call that the actual. Let them undergo a single reaction. You might get new kinds of molecules. That's the adjacent possible. Same thing for species, same thing in the economy. The adjacent possible seems to be growing in chemistry, in technology, in the biosphere. If we could find a reason why the universe, our universe, grows its adjacent possible, and if we could find a reason why the most rapidly growing adjacent possible gives you a Darwinian winning universe, this is deeply Darwinian, the winning universe, and if that process tuned the constants, which theory I happen not to have worked out, but I mean, suppose we could, it's a totally different way of thinking about the problem of the fine-tuning. It says that there's a selective process, the fastest growing universe, that pulls out maybe the laws and maybe the constants, and we don't need the multiverse. But and you would have to assume then that the fastest growing universe is the one that is best suited for human existence. And that's not at all obvious. You're right. That is, it's not obvious that the fastest growing universe is also the one. Maybe what one needs in this, prompted by the question you've just raised, if one could find a reason in which the adjacent possible of the universe builds its complexity, for which we have no account, and if the building of the complexity gives us, for example, carbon, gives us the complex mm -hmm. atoms, mm -hmm. gives us the complex molecules, then I think you will get life. Okay, I think you'll get collectively autocatalytic sets, which have been made experimentally. And then recent work has shown mathematically that they can evolve in an open-ended way if you put them in what are called liposomes, which are little lipid bubbles. In cells. So, in cells, yeah. So I think we can get life uh, as, as a sort of a natural property of the universe. Um, you, now, that you, doesn't you, get you to intelligent life. Right. So in the biosphere, when you have adjacent possibilities generating life, that's self-consistent because generating life is what you're trying to do. When you're now applying that in the universe, though, you're saying that the adjacent possibilities which span the universe are creating the conditions for life. That's an extra step. It's a big extra step. What we're missing is any account... Well, that's false. 
we're missing an adequate account of why the universe got complex. I mean, you know, I mean people do have theories about how galaxies form and, mm -hmm. and, and why there's the background radiation that there is and why planets form and protoplanets and, and so on. So there, there's a lot that's known in cosmology. And, and So complexity is the missing step. You know, you, from, from diverse possibilities in the universe to get to life, you need, you need, a, you need that step, and that's we, complexity. We, we need, we the need generation that step. of and complexity. I, want to, I, I have a hunch. It's not a belief. And it's certainly not a theory uh, that this idea that if you have enough processes and enough things that uh, and enough things where processes can act on things to make new mm -hmm, things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like in chemistry, mm -hmm. okay, uh, operating in the universe, that this will persistently break symmetries in a way that creates uh, this idea of a supercritical system that then explodes in a diversity of ever-increasing new things and new processes, like the economy has done. And nobody's thought like this. Whether or not this can be made to pay off, I don't know. Yeah. But, but I, don't like, I don't like what I hear the physicists saying about why the universe got okay. complex because they, they mostly don't say very much. But if, if you are uh, uh, eliminating multiple universes uh, because you don't like them, I, we all agree Just that... Just emotionally. <laughs> if, 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 but but how, are they, how are you then selecting the, the very fine-tuned laws of physics? You're, you're having a selection effect within the same universe yes. because those, those constants are changing by a selection effect, but... but but if you don't have multiple universes with different constants in each one, how is it, how is it, what is the mechanism What's the for selection? changing? So I need to tell you a mathematical idea. Famous Alan Turing invented a famous model called the morphogenesis model. Without going into the details, you've got some chemicals, and one activates the formation of itself and the other, and the other inhibits the formation of both of them. Okay. And one diffuses better than the other. So you put it in, for example, uh, a straw with sealed ends. And he showed mathematically that it tends to make standing wave patterns. Here's the move that he makes mathematically. You imagine that at the beginning of time, you have, you have little fluctuations in chemical concentrations. The equations pluck out of these fluctuations the wavelength, like that, not like this, Okay, the wavelength that fits inside the tube and matches what are called the boundary conditions. Mm. In much the same way, I want to believe, if we had fluctuations in the laws of quantum mechanics and fluctuations in the constants, and we had a means for the winning pattern, which in, in Turing's case is, is the pattern that fits into the boundary conditions, um, notice that there aren't competing universes in, in, in Turing's model. Mm -hmm. There's not competing organisms. There are fluctuations, and some are amplified and some aren't. If we could build a model like that, just, just maybe, say I, a biologist, we could build a theory in which it's an inevitable property of the formation of complex interwoven parts and processes that you break symmetries, that you get a complex universe, and that you get chemistry, and given chemistry, you get life. You know what? If everything you say is true and it works, the one critical thing you're missing is that that system that you've now designed itself has to be fine-tuned. If there's a way of evolving the fine-tuning, the, the, so let me say why I disagree. The fine-tuning in this picture comes out because only that universe with the nicely tuned constants of nature grows the fastest. So it's totally Darwinian. It's not Weinberg, it's Darwin. And Darwin says is if we get the fastest growing universe, it wins. But, 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 but if you have fastest, then you have multiple universes. No, there's just one. Just like in Turing's model, where you get this wavelength pattern in the straw, but other wavelength but patterns... But if you have one universe and you have a system which creates a changing laws of physics, with different, changing the constants of physics so that they get fine-tuned to what's needed for life, if that's the structure, then that system for making that 
so precise itself would have to be fine-tuned. Why, why does it do no, that? No, no. Why I, does it do that? I, I need the following argument, which not only have I not fleshed out, I don't necessarily believe. In Turing's model, so one bit of math, um, if, if I, I have those weird fluctuations in the chemical concentrations in the straw, you can use Fourier analysis to say, I got a little bit of all sorts of wavelengths, okay? Then goes the math. The, the nonlinear behavior among the chemicals plucks out of all of those wavelengths that are simultaneously present, the one that happens to be two inches from peak to peak to peak and end in flat regions at the end that match no flux boundary conditions. And it wins against all of the other fluctuations that are simultaneously present. Now, by loose, I stress, analogy, if one could find a similar argument for a for a universe in which there's fluctuations in the laws and the constants, uh, and you have something that pulls out a winning universe, notice that in Turing's case, there's no heritable variation. There's just the fact that the nonlinear dynamics pluck out a particular winning pattern. If one could get that to go, one wouldn't need heritable variation. One would just need that the fluctuations pull out the winning pattern. And if the winning pattern is the fastest growing universe, and we can get out of it a complex universe, I'd love it. Do I believe it? Not at all. <laughs>